What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over seven Google Search Console tips and tricks to help you improve your rankings. This is part 11 of my SEO tutorial for beginners. You can find all of the earlier parts in the playlist that's going to be linked in the video description if you want to watch those. So to get started with Google Search Console, if you're not using it yet, what you want to do is you want to go to google.com slash webmasters. You're going to see this exact page right here. And what you can do is you can click on this search console link. So the Google search console allows you to track your website's performance in the Google search engine in terms of clicks, impressions, your average position. And then you can also find some technical issues or technical enhancements for your website. So in order to get started, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Google search console. You're going to click on this link right here. It's going to open up a search console that looks something like this. And what you need to do is from this drop down, you need to come down and add a property. So when you add a property, what you can do is you can verify your website using Google Tag Manager, an HTML file, an HTML tag, Google Analytics, or your domain name provider. I would highly recommend using Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, or your domain name provider. Any of those three will work perfectly and it allows you to track exactly how your website is performing. So now what I want to show you are some of the different things I like to do with Google Search Console. So I'm going to open up Google Search Console here for my website farmhousegoals.com. And you can see it's showing clicks over the last three months for my website directly from google.com. So if I come back over here, I want to get started with number one, which is going to be to export your search queries and find search volume. So step one is we're going to be going to this performance tab here. So we come back over to the Google search console and what we're going to do is be clicking on performance and it's going to show the last three months here. So we can just use the last three months of data and we're going to scroll down and you're going to see queries here. So it's going to show the top search terms that are driving clicks and impressions to our website. So what we want to do with this data is just export it. So we're going to click on export data here. You can either download a CSV file or download this directly to Google Sheets. For this, I'm going to download a CSV file and open it in Microsoft Excel. Okay, I've downloaded and opened the CSV file. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take impressions here and I'm going to be looking at the top search queries by impressions. So we're going to take this column, we're going to come over here to data and we're just going to do Z to A, so from highest to lowest. So it's going to, we're going to expand the selection so it's going to show the top searched keywords, the keywords that are driving clicks and impressions for our website. So what I want to do is I want to take these search terms right here and we're going to scroll down and I'm going to select about the first 500 of them. I've selected 500, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these keywords and we're going to come over to a free tool that's available and it's searchvolume.io. And what it is is a free keyword search volume tool that's going to give you the search volume from the Google Keyword Planner and all we need to do is enter our keywords here. So you're allowed to check 800 daily keywords and you'll get search volume statistics for those keywords. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to paste the keywords that I selected in the previous step. So basically what we do is we export our top keywords from Google Search Console. We open that in a CSV file. We're going to copy. I'm just going to choose 500 here. You can do 800 keywords if you want. If you only want to focus on the top 200, you can. But I'm going to take this and we're going to click on submit. And now what you're going to see is it's going to give me all of these keywords and the search volume for all of these keywords as well. So if I come over here to average monthly searches and we just rank it, what it's going to do is go from high to low again. And we can see some of the top keywords that are driving traffic to my website. So using this data, what I can do is I can find, okay, something like farmhouse dining table, rustic chandeliers, farmhouse sinks, rustic ceiling fans. These are all keywords that are getting a lot of searches every month. And they're keywords that if I optimize better for and try to improve my rankings, improve my position, then it's going to help me drive more organic search traffic back to my website. So number one is going to be to export these search terms, find the search volume for them using searchvolume.io. And you're going to see here, this is going to give me the search volume for all these different keywords. And I can just come in there and I can download that CSV file and it's going to allow me to use that data to improve my website and improve my SEO rankings as well. Okay, next is going to be number two. And number two is going to be to find technical issues in the enhancements section. So directly from the overview tab in Google Search Console, so we're going to open up Google Search Console again, directly from this overview tab right here, what we can see is if we scroll down, it's going to show enhancements. And with enhancements, it's going to show us valid errors and trend. So errors is going to allow you to see some of the errors that Google is giving you for your website in the Google search results. So if we just take speed and you're going to see it's going to say speed experimental for right now, that might change over time. Speed is pretty new. It's saying I have complete errors for this section. Mobile usability, I'm pretty much valid across the board. Accelerated mobile pages, I have a lot of errors there. Breadcrumbs, I'm valid. Logos, I have errors there. Site link search box, completely valid. 
So some of these I'm not too worried about. If I come to accelerated mobile pages here, click on open report, it's gonna show me some of the errors I'm getting, valid with warnings, and then completely valid. So that's gonna show me some of the issues that I need to fix for my website. So with accelerated mobile pages, the errors, I have over 1,000 errors here. So you're gonna say, AMP HTML tag is an invalid layout specified by its attributes. So that's something that I need to fix. The next, if I come over here to speed, so speed is giving me errors. It's saying I have complete slow URLs for my entire website. If I come here and go to open report and I scroll down and click on details, it's saying my issue is that it's taking longer than three seconds to load on desktop devices. So if I click on this, it's gonna give me some specific URLs and you're gonna see here, these are some specific URLs. So the average load time is anywhere from three seconds to 4.8 seconds. So it's really not the end of the world, it's just something where I need to continue to clean up my website and improve the speed for my website, which is something I'm planning on working on. So you can find all these issues directly from overview or down here on the left in enhancements, go through each individual section here and find some of these errors that you're getting. So for example, I get errors with logos. I've tried to fix these errors and it won't fix. It doesn't seem to impact my search engine rankings, but generally as a best practice, what you wanna do is make sure that you're completely valid with all of these different things here. So that's something that I definitely need to work on for my website. So that's gonna be number two is use the enhancement section. You can go directly to overview tab and see all of these right here, or go one by one through the enhancements to find some of these technical issues and make sure that you're fixing them for your website. Next is gonna be number three. So number three is gonna be to compare date ranges to find negative differences. So this is a pretty simple one. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be coming back to this performance tab here, and you can see total clicks, total impressions, and instead of using date last three months, what we could do is instead of using filter, click on compare here, and we can compare the last three months to the previous three months before that. So click on apply. So you can see here, I've been able to more than double my clicks, double my impressions over a six month period. So comparing three months to the previous three months before that, I've been able to drive a lot more traffic back to my website. And that's a trend that I'm hoping to continue to keep improving over time. But what we can do with compare is we can come down here and you're going to see last three months clicks, previous three months clicks. So you, you can rank all these things and you can see something like Ray Dunn Christmas, for example. I drove 333 clicks over the last three months compared to the previous three months, which was 38. So a lot of this is due to seasonality, but some of it's also due to optimizing for these keywords a little bit better before the holiday season. One thing that we can do is we can click on filters here. And under filters, what we can do is we can see differences in clicks and differences in impressions. So I like looking at differences in, in impressions because if I'm seeing impressions drop, I wanna know why specific pages or specific search terms are having those differences. So I'm gonna come here to difference and you're gonna see right here, it's gonna say equals, not equals, greater than or smaller than. So if I'm doing smaller than zero, what that means is anything that's had a drop in impressions over the last three months, it's gonna show here over to the right hand side. So I'm gonna click on done here and you're gonna see last three months clicks, previous three months clicks. So all of these have had a drop in impressions. So if we come over here to previous three months impressions and we do it by that column, you're gonna see something here, farmhouse Christmas ornaments. I've lost about a thousand searches here. Now some of these I'm not overly concerned about because a lot of times what it means is just seasonality. People aren't searching as much for some of these Christmas terms as they were previously. I like to do this with pages because if I come to pages and I look at these differences, I can find some of the pages that are losing impressions in the search results. So if I come down over here, you're gonna see best farmhouse dining tables. So I've lost a little bit over here. Now this has had a big drop off. It's an individual product page. So you're gonna see I've lost a lot of clicks here and I've lost a lot of impressions. So that's something where maybe I go back to the product page, see if there's something where I can improve, add some new images, make sure that my title tag and everything is optimized. So for individual product pages, it's not something I worry about as much, but if I keep scrolling down here, you're gonna see farmhouse coffee tables. So for that, I've lost a thousand impressions, uh, only seven clicks over a three month period. So it's really not the end of the world. But if I do find some of these pages here where I'm losing clicks, losing impressions, what I can do is make sure that I go back to that content, make sure it's as relevant as possible, add anything I need to to enhance that content because this is starting to become a trend where a page like this, it's starting to lose impressions, so it's gonna start losing clicks as well. So since I've had a lot of growth here, I don't have a ton of pages that are declining, and a lot of these are just individual product pages. Now you might see something like this. This is an accelerated mobile page for farmhouse ceiling fans. So it might just be something where that individual page isn't being indexed as often. 
So with accelerated mobile pages, I don't worry mu as much about compare, but what I do like to do is see some of these impression drop-offs, look at some of these click drop-offs, and if I can find some of these differences, I can go back to these pieces of content and I can make sure that I optimize them so I don't continue to lose all of these clicks. I want to make sure my clicks are increasing over time. So if I'm seeing a page that I know I want to be ranking, I want to get a better average position for, then it's something where if I'm seeing these negative trends, I need to go and improve that page. So that's going to be number three. It's going to be to compare date ranges to find negative differences. Number four is going to be to find the individual search queries that are driving traffic to a page. So what you can do is if I come over here and we come back to the performance tab, if we scroll down and we click on pages here, what we can do is we can click on an individual page to see what's driving traffic to that page. So let's use this one right here, farmhouse bath rug. So we're going to click on this page. So now that's going to be our filter It's going to be the page up here. You can also do this adding individual pages by coming to new and then clicking on page here and entering that URL directly. So what this is showing is over the last three months, this individual page on my website has driven 195 clicks, 7.4 thousand impressions. If I scroll down, what you can see is it's just showing this page. If I click on queries instead, it's going to show the actual search terms that are driving traffic and driving impressions for that page. So what this allows me to do is see what these top search terms are, make sure that my content is completely optimized for these search terms, and maybe if I want to find something like farmhouse bath mats, for example, maybe that's a keyword that I can pull out and either create my own piece of content for that keyword or make sure that I really focus a lot on farmhouse bath mats in the article. So I like looking at these search terms for individual pages because you're going to find a lot of different ideas and some ways that you can continue to improve your content. So when I did this with farmhouse dining table, what I found was people were looking up round farmhouse dining tables, rectangle farmhouse dining tables, white, brown farmhouse dining table. So using all of these different subtopics, I can make sure that my content is optimized for those subtopics and I can even take some of those subtopics out and use them as their own pieces of content to continue to improve my rankings for those keywords. So this is going to be number four is to find the search queries driving traffic to a page. All you need to do is use the filter at the top, enter the individual page, and then just look at the search queries for that page. And it's going to show you the clicks and impressions that are driving traffic. And it's going to help you continue to optimize for these different keywords, even if you have to create a whole new piece of content. Now, number five is going to be to inspect URLs to find indexing issues and technical issues. So this is kind of going to go along with some of these enhancements that I showed you earlier. But what we can do is up at the very top, here, you're going to see inspect any URL in farmhousegoals.com. So if I click up here at the top, you can see I've inspected a couple URLs. So one I want to inspect right here is farmhouse shelves. So in the inspection page, it's saying URL is on Google, but it has issues. So what we can see is coverage, submitted and indexed, mobile usability, page is mobile friendly. My linked AMP version is valid, but with warnings. So that goes back to some of the issues we saw in the enhancements earlier. So I have to make sure that I continue to improve that. So if I can click on AMP here, keep scrolling down, you're going to see AMP version is indexed, but the image size is smaller than recommended size. So that means I need to fix my image sizes on the AMP version for this page and probably for other pages as well. Now, if we come back over here to URL inspection and we scroll down to logos, it's saying one invalid item detected. So if we click on it, it's going to show us what the exact issue is. Unnamed item, missing field URL. I don't know why it's showing missing field URL. I have the URL here, but maybe it's a different issue that I'm not seeing. So this is something where I need to go and probably contact a developer or contact someone who can fix this issue for me unless I do a quick Google search and figure it out that way. So seeing some of these errors in the URL inspection, it helps you find some indexing issues. So you might enter your URL here and it says URL is not on Google. It's not indexed and it'll show you exactly why it's not indexed. It might just be something where your robots.txt file is blocking an individual page or a section on your website. So URL inspection can be very useful for finding some of these issues. Maybe you have mobile usability issues. You want to make sure you get those fixed because you want coverage to be good, mobile usability to be good, accelerated mobile pages to be good, so that everything is indexed and ranking as well as it possibly can be. So these are some more errors that I need to fix, and I can find them directly through the Google Search Console. Next is going to be number six. So number six is to find data about individual search queries that are driving traffic. So what I can do is if I come back over here and we're going to come to performance and we're going to click on new here. So rather than doing page, we're going to be doing query. So if we click here, you can do exact queries, queries not containing specific words or queries containing words. And let's just use farmhouse shelves here, for example, click on apply. 
So over the last week, I've been optimizing my website for this individual search term. So you're going to be seeing 28 clicks, over 7,000 impressions over the last three months. I want to kind of triple, even quadruple some of these numbers to make sure I'm driving multiple clicks per day related to farmhouse shelves. But if I enter queries containing farmhouse shelves here and I continue to scroll down, what you're going to see is these different search terms that are driving clicks and impressions back to my website. So this allows me to find some different content ideas because someone looking for farmhouse shelves might have a different intent than someone who's looking for them specifically for their bathroom or specifically industrial style farmhouse shelves. Or maybe they're looking for something with hooks. Maybe they're looking for floating farmhouse shelves. So what I've done is I've used a lot of this data to actually guide some of my content decisions. So if I come over to my blog for farmhousegoals.com, you're going to see some of the different articles that I posted. So industrial shelves, bathroom shelves kitchen shelves, rustic kitchen shelves. So I'm trying to optimize for more of these different keywords. And the way I've done it is I've taken some of these different keywords here and I've used them as subtopics. So essentially I have a page about farmhouse shelves on my website that links off to all these different pages and also includes a lot of content around farmhouse shelves, basically everything everyone would need to know about choosing them, different styles. So using this type of data and using the search queries that are driving traffic to your website for specific topics, you can not only find subtopics, but you can start to create some of these content hubs, some of these topic clusters that's going to allow you to rank higher in Google for all of these related keywords because my website will be seen as a great resource for people who are specifically looking for farmhouse shelves. So next is going to be number seven, last but not least is to look for low click-through rate pages to make improvements to your title tags, to make improvements to those pages so you can improve your position and improve your click-through rate in the Google search results. This one will be pretty easy to show, so all we need to do is we're gonna come over here, we're gonna get rid of this search query farmhouse shelves. So we're looking at our entire website last three months, so we're gonna click on pages here, and what I wanna do is I just wanna click over here on filters, and let's just say impressions, are greater than 5,000. So we wanted to find some of our top pages. We don't want to find pages that only have 10, 20, 30 impressions. So impressions are greater than 5,000 over the last three months. And then what we can do is we can look at average click through right here and we'll just add an average position as well. So if we keep scrolling down, what we're going to see are clicks, impressions, click through rate, position. So what I'm going to do is click on click through rate. So these are the top click through rate pages. And then we're going to click it again. So this is gonna give us the lowest click-through rate pages. The first one here is best farmhouse dining tables. So my average position is pretty poor for this individual page. So it's definitely a page that I need to improve. But if we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see some different product pages that have a very low click-through rate. And then I can see something here, farmhouse copper sinks, very low click-through rate. So if I can get this click-through rate up to 1%, that's gonna help me 10X the amount of clicks that I'm driving back to my website. So keep scrolling down, you're gonna see a lot of product pages here. So with the product pages, what I would probably do is click on each individual one and see if I can improve the title, maybe improve the meta description a little bit and see what's making these pages have such a poor click through rate. For something like stainless steel farmhouse sinks, for farmhouse copper sinks, what I need to do is find a title tag template that's gonna help me drive more of that traffic back to my website. The other issue might just be that the average position is so low that even if people are clicking to the second page or the third page of the Google search results, they're not actually clicking on my URL because it's so far down in Google. So I need to improve the position here and I need to improve my title tag to make sure that people are gonna be more likely to click some of these different articles. So I like to look at low click-through rate pages because if I'm already getting these impressions, if I can improve this average click-through rate, if I could double my average click-through rate, I would double my clicks. So it's something kind of simple to understand in theory, but it is a lot more difficult to execute. And it's something where I need to find my pages that are driving this low click-through rate, find some of these pages with a poor average position and go through and improve them one by one. So I love using the Google Search Console. It's a completely free tool. You're gonna drive the majority of your organic search traffic from Google. So it makes sense to use this tool to understand the types of search terms that are driving traffic to your website, your pages that are performing well, your pages that are performing poorly, and then finding some of these technical issues as well and fixing them one by one. So I clearly have a lot of work to do with farmhousegoals.com. I'm happy with my overall results. You can see over the last three months, I've been able to double my traffic, double my impressions. So if I continue on with that trend, then I can keep driving more and more traffic to my website, which equals more revenue. So 
That's why you want to use some of these tips and tricks for Google Search Console. These are seven of the different things that I do when I'm going through Google Search Console to try to improve my rankings to find some of these different opportunities. So this is part 11 of my SEO tutorial. Again, you can find the complete tutorial playlist in the video description. Thank you for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.